Welcome back to Onsign TV Academy. In this Academy video, we'll cover everything you need to know about our new and improved dynamic compositions. They allow you to deploy a variety of visual content in a few short steps, and just like the tried and true composition, it's a versatile tool whenever you want to whip up a custom design, be it a quick sales banner, an event announcement, or a menu board, for example. But now, instead of static, with dynamic elements. Dynamic composition also makes screen division very simple, allowing you to stretch and stack visual elements in any way you need. This, of course, includes images, videos, and apps. Also, before we begin, you will be pleased to hear that dynamic compositions work on all players available on Onsign TV, including those older than version 10. To start, go to New and click on Composition. There are several templates to choose from, but to demonstrate, let's begin with a clean blank canvas. I'll start by changing the main color of the background. Click this little wheel here and change the color here. You can also adjust the dimensions of the composition here to make sure that it fits your screen nicely. When it comes to your content sources, everything you will need is going to be on the left side of the screen here. First and most important, the content tab lets you access your files on the Onsign TV platform. You can drag in any visual you want to into your composition. As I said, this includes images, videos, or even apps. I'll start off with a simple image, position it here however you want to on the canvas, stretch the image from the sides, or drag it by the corners to maintain its aspect ratio. As you select or click on your image, you'll see a variety of settings here on the left. Adjust the angle and opacity of the image here. You can also animate the image by giving it a transitional effect. I'll set this one to slide in from the left. And if you hit the preview button here, you can see what your composition will look like. If you need to, adjust how long it takes for the image to appear and for how long it will remain on your screen. Below this, the data feed dropdown lets you load images from an existing data feed. So for example, I'll use the data feed that contains a list of some fun animal facts and images. A media space like this image will only let you connect to a data feed column with images or videos. Some data feeds may have more than a single column with images as content, and in that case, just specify the column here. Set how long the image will appear as well as the aspect ratio for your image. I'll set mine to fit width. As you just saw, selecting the data feed option replaced the image we inserted at the start. This is very useful if you just want to swap out the location of the image without the need to resize it from the beginning. And if you want to start off with the data feed right away, just use this placeholder image here. As you drag in videos, you'll see these main visual settings are pretty much the same, except you also have the option to mute the video. Dynamic compositions also let you drag in your apps. I'll drag in my weather app here to demonstrate. Apps share the same settings as videos and images, but the best part is that apps are responsive. They adapt to the shape provided. So take this weather app, for example. I'll squeeze it quite a bit from its original shape, and once I hit the preview button, you can see how it adapted its content to fit the shape perfectly. Moving on to the text tab, here you can select a variety of fonts, including any fonts you previously uploaded to the platform. Click the font here that you like, enter your custom text here, and adjust it in the main settings. Notice that just like we did with the image here, you can load the text from an existing data feed. In this example, we imported images from a collection of fun facts about animals. So here I'll bring in two text fields. The first will pull up the heading or the title for the fun fact, and the other will pull up the text. Notice also that I just adjusted the font size to make it fit the composition better. And when I hit preview, you can see what the finished result looks like. In case you're using correlated text and images like I am here, make sure to sync the duration of the text and the image connected to it, so both appear together. This of course means you can load data from different data feeds, so the title and text, for example, can come from one data feed and the image can come from another. This of course is just one example of loading text from data feeds. Use this feature for announcements, advertisements, or even to feature the latest discounts. So whenever you want to update the text within the composition, you simply update or add more text into your data feed. 
Click on this little gear icon to narrow down the range, sort the content within the data feed, or even deploy custom filters. Filters allow an automated search to only show content matching specific criteria. For example, you can set the filter to only include text that contains a specific word, or perhaps being relevant on a certain date. Moving on to the Shapes tab, here you'll find some rudimentary shapes and stickers to use in your compositions, maybe if you need a background for your text or just to fill in a gap between the content elements. And the final tab, Layers, gives you a clear overview of the content within your composition. Here you can organize which visuals will appear on top and to ensure everything looks clean and nothing is buried under other content. For instance, you always want your text to be on top of its background. Simply drag them around into the order that you want them to be. As you hover over each layer, you'll also see it highlighted on the composition like this. This chain icon here means the layer is connected to a data feed, so you can easily find your more important layers. You can also make certain elements invisible or even delete them. This little padlock icon prevents a layer from getting changed in the workspace. This is ideal for elements like logos or borders that never change their position, so no accidental changes can happen if you're working with a team. Just lock everything except the text that you want people to edit, and other users can update your compositions without making an involuntary mistake. Now that we cover the basics of compositions, let's take a look at the templates you can use to get started. We have some great directional templates here. Select the one you like, and you can start editing right away. Select the element you want to edit or even delete and just start customizing. As you build compositions, you may want to save them as templates for your team. For that, click the settings icon here and tick composition is a template. There are already several menu board templates to use as well as some ad banners to use as a basis for your own offers. The best part about compositions is that they're very quick to update. You can use the same composition constantly and adjust it in just a few clicks to keep it up to date. And once everything is in order, your composition is ready to be saved and published. Just click on the Save As button here, then give your composition a name and hit Save. Your composition is now ready for publishing. As you can see, there are endless ways to use dynamic compositions to organize the content on your screen and make your content more visually appealing to the eye. It can be something as simple as adding a clock widget or your logo in the corner or an information terminal that's packed to the brim with information. It all depends on what your audience needs. That's it for this Academy video. I'll see you in the next one.